I have made it here sitting in front of the camera to finally unload. Uh, as you can tell from the title of this video, I am going to be talking about my college experience thus far. Um, I do have just a few disclaimers I need to throw out there, as well as my kind of plan for unpacking this story. We get into it, so bear with me here. I think it's important to put some disclaimers out there for people who are definitely watching this to put out criticisms who are in my personal life who know a lot about this story directly. So I just want to be completely crystal clear about everything from my perspective and my experience in this situation. And Firstly, I just want to put out there that my personal experience with Greek life is not a reflection of everybody's experience in Greek life. I can definitely say that. Um, my campus is Greek life specifically is very different than most typical experiences people would have, which definitely did influence my own experience in it. And well, I just think that that plays a big part. I can get into more of that as we get into it as well. I also just want to say that I will not be mentioning any names in this video. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there that can put the pieces together of who is who and what is what, but I just think for privacy reasons, I don't need to bring up names of anybody or anything. So yeah, if you're interested in hearing about my college story from beginning to right now at this very current moment, stay tuned because I'm planning on doing my long story, brief summary of everything in this video. I plan on doing a second video about being hazed and a third video about relationships in college and in general, friendships, romantic relationships, the whole, the whole shebang. So that's kind of how I wanted to organize these videos, so just know that those will be coming before the year ends. That's my goal, I'm trying to leave all of this shit in this decade, so I think that talking about it, bringing awareness to situations like this, and just, yeah, being more open about it will help me let go of it, as well as hopefully give some of you some hope if you are also struggling or have been in similar situations like I have been. So, sorry for everyone who's gonna be bothered by these videos, but again, this is just what I wanna do to fully move on from all of this, because it truly already feels like a life ago, and it seriously wasn't that long ago, so, yeah, I'm ready to make it a life ago uh, as we roll into 2020. So yeah, before we get started, feel free to give me a follow at Sadie K right here, wherever I put it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's get started. And to start this story, we have to begin before I even went to college, when I was back in high school. God, do I dare even think that far. But I was deciding on where I wanted to go to school. And once I decided, I was still in a relationship at this point in time during high school, so we decided to kind of split to make that decision of where to go. And then whatever happens, happens. Well, we ended up both deciding to go to the same place. Yeah, dumb idea in hindsight, but it all worked out in the end. So, fast forward, we go to college together. I'm a freshman. I literally turned 18 a week before I started school. Yeah, move in, do the whole like freshman welcome thing. And I quickly realized that I moved pretty far from home, like four hours from where I grew up, uh, which might not be like a lot for some people, but it was a lot for me coming from a small town in the Midwest and going to a bigger place. And so moving was stressful, but I was really thankful to have my significant other at the time there because support systems, friendship, all that shit. But as high school relationships in college do, they end. And so we ended up breaking up literally, I think like two weeks after we got there was I think the first week of classes. Um, and while that was happening, I was also going through my own personal change of like realizing that my future was not gonna be anything I expected it to be because I came into college as a biochemistry major 
and quickly realized that that was not the path for me. From taking Calc 2 for a week, I realized that that was not the direction I wanted to go. So within those first few weeks of school, I also was changing my entire course schedule to be a completely different major path than I had originally anticipated. Um, so there was just a lot going on um, in general. and. You get a new roommate when you go to college, and my roommate, she knew from the very get-go, like her mom was involved in Greek life, so she knew that that was something that she wanted to be a part of. And I honestly saw it as an opportunity to make friends. I was all about it. We had actually had conversations, me and my boyfriend at the time, and her about like what it would be like joining Greek life and how I definitely didn't want to be a part of it and <laughs> all this stuff. but. We ended up going to these recruitment events and this is kind of where I wanted to get into how my Greek life on campus, this campus is different than other campuses because like my campus was so small that there, like this will only really make sense to people who understand Greek life and the Greek life functions but basically if I had to put it in simple terms there's the Greek life chapter organizations you have at your schools and usually there are governing councils above those chapters. One for fraternities, one for sororities, and my campus was so small that there weren't enough sororities to even have this governing council yet. So there was pretty much no rules to what was happening besides what they instilled on themselves through their own small council they had created. Basically recruitment was a bunch of different social events, but it was with fraternities, which is not like a typical Panhellenic recruitment process. Um, there was no like house tours because there are no houses in the town I live in, and um, it, it's just a a very different experience than I think what people typically assume with Greek life. But in the end of the process of like recruitment, you are going through a what they called a informational process, which is basically just an interview where they ask you some questions about like how bad you want to be in their sorority, what do you have to offer, like what makes you want to join, just basic stuff like that, and from that point on they decide whether or not you're going to get a bid, and a bid being an invitation to start the pledging process. So as my friend and I went through these recruitment events, I genuinely didn't think that I was going to join because I just didn't think I was a sorority girl. I never wanted to be a part of that lifestyle. I never was appealed to it in any way. However, there was an organization on my campus that was very different. It wasn't a national sorority. It um, felt more real to me and I kind of had, like I always call it, it was my dance team out of high school just with like a, out the dancing part because literally being on the dance team in high school was like being in a sorority. I've come to find out. So. Anyways, recruitment goes on. We go to the events, we go to informationals, we get our interviews done. Lo and behold, we both get the call to get our bids. So we go, we all meet up. It's like, I don't even remember, I think 12 of us. Yeah, I think there was 12 of us and it was exciting. I'm not gonna lie, I was excited and I thought, wow, like all these people are gonna be my friends. I can't wait to get to know them, whatever, whatever. I was excited. So I think there was like a two day gap in between when you got your bid versus when you get, uh, when you can accept it. They have a pinning ceremony where you are officially entered into the pledge ship before you are a active member. I also know that like a lot of the terminology of pledges and whatever aren't used anymore or aren't used on my campus, but that is definitely what was used when I joined, so I want to be as transparent about the language and about everything that it was when I joined because it definitely has changed up until this point that I am at. Um, days pass and we get to my pinning ceremony and you basically like raise your right hand, say a bunch of shit and you're like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna be a sister, or whatever. And so, after that's over, you sit down with your pledge mom, and the pledge mom is the person who is an active member in the sorority at the time who is going to get you through the process. And um, during this meeting, they give you a manual, which has a bunch of history information about your organization and a bunch of other information, which I'll be getting into all of the details about what my actual pledging experience entailed in the next video. But I just want to include at least this little tidbit because I think it kind of gives perspective onto what I was dealing with. And so, yeah. Anyways, I 
go into this meeting with this girl who I've never met before with all these strangers and she's basically telling us all of these responsibilities that we are going to have on top of being a freshman in college that was most of us. So I was like the only one that spoke up about it being like so is this like the extent of the hazing that's done and I was told that hazing wasn't allowed on this campus and so I was like um yeah I just kind of was like okay whatever I'm not too worried about it but anyways we were told that that Friday we were gonna have a party um to celebrate us and I was like holy shit like I'm gonna be going to a college party for the first time like I already like have this social in that I really was craving after being like super homesick and alone and four hours away and just broke up with my boyfriend and yada 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 had no friends you get the gist so we go to this pinning party and um yeah basically it was crazy it got super fucked up and i think that that's probably the starting point of really when i got heavily invested in the partying life and i think that that's a very common occurrence for people in college i know it's not everybody but at the time i definitely thought that that's what i was coming here for partly for at least and so yeah that's what happened and when i grew up i also like i was partying in high school so it wasn't that crazy for me to like just indulge but um it definitely was a different experience than what i was used to there's a lot more people a lot more opportunities consume different substances and i definitely didn't partake in that but i just want to be very clear again about what was happening so yeah i would say that the pinning party was the beginning of my alcoholic tendencies i'm literally going to put it in that term because that's what it was and so i began to drink every single weekend that i was in college that very beginning semester i had because there were mixers every friday that were literally parties for the pledges so i felt obligated to go you also had opportunities to get rewarded by the sorority to go to these social events um again like I said, I will get into more detail in the next video on all of this stuff, but I just want to kind of set the scene for my freshman year. So the six weeks of pledgeship go by and I somehow make it through. I definitely was hazed to say what happened. Like definitely did and the reason i feel comfortable also sharing this in the next story is that it is like out it is recorded by my uh, institution they have gone through an investigative process to know about all of the things that were happening to specifically my pledge class so if people really wanted to find out it would not be that hard to get there so that's why i feel like i can tell my story and spread awareness because it's already been done and should be talked about more because it's honestly messed up and yeah back to the story well i am finishing up my pledge ship you become an active member during that um process after you become an active member they have a banquet which is to celebrate the new pledges being initiated as active members for my sorority, we drove like an hour and a half out of town to this like cabin on the lake type of vibe. And you basically drink for an entire weekend and party, which whatever, celebrate, have fun. Um, and then this was a few weeks before finals. That semester I failed, I believe, at least one of my classes. And so I was put on to academic probation after this. I also had started a romantic relationship at the end of this semester, um, which definitely encouraged my partying lifestyle and habits because they were also in Greek life. So it kind of just spiraled at that point, I would say, um, into me not really caring about school me just partying all the time and just really kind of like losing my sense of self. I had definitely faced some traumatic experiences in high school and was had to relive some of those in college in that spring semester of school, which um, yeah, was really difficult for me. Um, it was really hard and I definitely had to face a lot of demons that I hadn't dealt with in a while and like seeing somebody that you care about in a vulnerable situation just never feels good so having to go through that in different ways was really hard for me and so 
I ended up, yeah, like I said, just partying too much, not caring about school. So that spring semester, I was officially um, excused as a student from my university. And it was really hard news to take. And like I said, at this point, I already know I was kind of going through it. It was not a good, it was not a good place to be. And I had to move home for a month in between when my lease was going to begin for my housing in the same town that I was kicked out of school to go to. And so when I was home, I saw my doctor and I got prescribed to be put on sertraline because I was going through it and I felt like that was what I needed in conjunction to my issues. So I started sertraline and I know that everyone's experiences with medication for mental illness are different, but my experience with sertraline was astronomically negative. Um, it literally made me feel like I couldn't feel any emotion. I've never felt that way since, but in the moment I literally felt like I, I didn't care about anything, I didn't care about anyone. Um, I ended up like breaking up with said boyfriend for a portion of time because of this drug I was on. I literally just like straight up was like, I don't feel like I care about you anymore. Like I don't want to put you through this. And um, it was just a really toxic time and it ended up leading me into a really dark place. I had dealt with some abuse from said partner, which again, maybe I will talk about in the next videos, we'll see, but it was definitely part of the story. And yeah, I ended up spiraling the hospital and after that day, I quickly realized that this was um, serious and that I needed to get off of sertraline. And instead of doing it the right way, I just completely went cold turkey. So I mean, just, yeah, like I said, I just literally stopped taking them. And also I keep forgetting to like bring up time references. This was fall of, into that fall, I think it was July, yeah, July 2017, that I went to the hospital, decided that I needed to just stop taking these drugs. And that was also the same night that said person that I was in a relationship with decided to ask me to get back together with them. Um, which was super manipulative and incredibly toxic, which just, yeah, led to that being a whole nother fucking situation for the next, like, five months of my life. So, fast forward to fall 2017, like I said, I'm not in school. I was still part of my sorority because, again, there were no rules, and so I could just do whatever, pretty much. So I was holding chairs and, like, being involved in that still even though I wasn't in school technically but after that fall semester I quickly realized that I did want to go to school so I enrolled at a community college in the same town as my university and was admitted to go for the spring of 2018. I was super pumped about it and excited and um, the person that I again I had got back together with just like we didn't have the same priorities at that point in time anymore and again we kind of built our relationship off of partying and that lifestyle and then once I got kicked out of school and like spiraled I quickly realized that that wasn't the direction I wanted to go. So I yeah quickly realized I wanted to go to school so then in spring of 2018 I began to go to online school through um, the community college in my town and that prior like December is when I finally cut ties with said person officially officially there was lots of big big um, incidents in between all of those times but that's the overarching time frame of when it happened it was I was home for Christmas break and I remember having a phone call about just like not talking ever again so yeah Spring 2018, I started classes, and I was just living in a really toxic house at the time with a bunch of people who fucking hated me, um, that were involved in my organization, and going through, like, an abusive relationship in Greek life really just, like, shows you everyone's true colors, because, yeah, none of those people I lived with understood it, but again, a lot of people don't understand, um, domestic violence and how it influences people and things like that, so I think that it's just people not fully understanding, like, 
the mental games that are involved but anyways <laughs> moving forward that spring I was yeah in school whatever got good grades but still my GPA was not good enough to get readmitted into my university of choice that I was already in before as a freshman so that summer of 2018 I took a full course load again of classes ended up doing really well um, that kind of too was yeah, I talk about that in my 2018 year review, I believe, about just how like I was working on school literally that entire summer and it was crazy, but yeah, so I was working on school and got good grades and was readmitted into my institution for the fall of 2018. And so while I was going to this other institution or other school, this community college, I was really separated from a lot of those people that I was exposed to before, which was super nice to move on and get out of that like toxic behavior that was like binge drinking every weekend and like not having your priorities straight. So um, yeah, it was a big shock to go back in fall of 2018. I had to face all those people again, I had to be in that atmosphere again, and it was really overwhelming, so I started seeing a therapist, and I have been literally ever since. I still am seeing teen. Like I said, I was back at my academic institution of choice that I was in freshman year, and it was really hard work. I had to write up a full, like, application of readmission, which included a paper on why I got kicked out, what I am going to change to do better, yada yada yada, and in that paperwork I did talk about, like, being involved in, like, the pledge class that was hazed, and, like, that if they wanted those records they could definitely get them, and, like, it was part of why I got readmitted into school, or at least somebody looked at that while I, I was in the process of it, so I think it's important to... Just keep that in mind too that I think I have privilege to talk about this story because it truly did affect my life in an astronomical amount. In crazy ways. <laughs> so then, it's been a year, my fall of 2019, I'm a senior now in college and I am graduating next semester hopefully and I, yeah, I have busted ass to get here and I think that I just really wanted to tell this story because I know people think that like if you get kicked out of school that like the world is over or your life is over or you're a failure or whatever and that's not true and you don't even have to go back to school to be like successful that was just the path that I wanted and I think it's important to know that and know that there are options for people and if you're on the fence about going to college don't go like there's literally no rush to put yourself in thousands of dollars of debt because you're unsure and you're just doing what people are telling you to do like take that gap year like just work live your life like it will still be there waiting for you no matter what and that was me like I took a semester off to really like process what had happened and think about what I wanted and it was school I had invested so much already I wanted to finish it out and I've worked really hard to do that and so if you just work hard at literally whatever you want to do then you're doing the right steps to fulfill your goals and your dreams and don't let anybody get in the way of that because I think that was another big realization I've had over the past four years is just that not everyone has good intentions for you, not everyone wants to be your friend for the right reasons, and being on your own and focusing on yourself is really honestly the best thing you can do in your life. And there's going to be moments when you're lonely and you're sad and all you want is to have a significant other there or to have a big group of friends to do whatever with, but you still have yourself and at the end of the day that's the only person that you're gonna have and I know that's kind of cynical but like it's gonna be okay like your friends will be free another day somebody else will come along and love you and like life will keep moving and I think that's kind of my big takeaway from all of this is just that like set the goals you want today so that four years from now you can see the results because nothing happens overnight and I just really right now sitting here in front of the camera can't even believe like how much I've truly done and overcome and have seen and being able to reflect on the videos on this channel has been super nice to really see that progress at least for me I know you guys haven't really known about the full extent of what everything that's been going on 
but I just really feel so proud of everything that I've overcome and I wanted to share that with the world and be proud of it because I've seriously worked so hard to get where I am and I'm so excited to graduate college and see where this life takes me but I just really want to put out there, like I said, about do what you want, be happy with what you want, you can get kicked out of school, it's gonna be okay, like you might not even get into your dream school or whatever. You might not do everything you hope you would do and it's gonna be okay. Like, I think overall just, it's gonna be fine. Chill, it's gonna be okay. We're all gonna be fine. But yeah, I plan on making my next video about my hazing story and just kind of what that was like, what I endured, how it impacted me, how I feel about it today, and kind of just overall that story. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about that or if you have any questions about relationships in college. Um, please feel free, like I said, to leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from anybody who has anything to say about this, um, good or bad open to it all. I'll let it just enjoy this and for people that who haven't known about any of this until now, I hope that you know, your perspectives change, you know that people have shit going on that you can't always see and it's important to know that, okay? Like you don't have to know everything that's going on to be a supportive person and to like enjoy people's presence and things. So, yeah. Take this for what it is. I hope that this video even makes sense because I can't tell you if it does while I'm sitting here rambling because it's definitely taken a lot for me to sit down and do this, but I hope that it was worth it. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and again, don't let your failures determine your life path. You can do whatever you want. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.